But a lot of other people, myself included, have read into this in a much worse light that Butch is essentially trying to use his platform to convert kids to Christianity without disclosing that fact. I fully admit that this is only a guess at what he's trying to say here, and it could be entirely wrong, but the reason I came to that conclusion is because of all the shadiness and sketchiness that happened before that point. In isolation, if the video had just surfaced, it probably wouldn't have meant much, but considering his Kickstarter was vague, and they're almost certainly is a reason it was vague, coupled with this video, definitely makes Butch look like he has some sinister agenda. Around this time, other clips of Butch... That was about 40 seconds of YouTuber Pie Guy Rules from the latest in his uh, Butch Hartman saga playlist. I am Matthew, author, artist, and commentator, and these are my offhand remarks on Butch Hartman's folly. And the smear campaign against Butch Hartman for his Oaxis uh, streaming service. June 19th, so this is a lot of facts and figures, folks, and then I'm going to go ahead and give commentary at the end of it. I just want to present the facts as clearly as I, as, as clearly as I can. Um, see, so June 19th, 20th, 2018, Pi Guy Rules predicted Oaxis would fail, uh, fail to reach funding, fail to succeed if funded, citing the scope as overly broad and concerned that the family focus would mean Oaxis would be boring, and therefore people wouldn't be attracted to it, wouldn't give it money, wouldn't happen, and even if it happened to work, uh, once Hartman got producing, the stuff would fall flat. July 17th, 2018, Pie Guy Rules complains about Hartman's clickbait and Hartman's uh, <laughs> a plea for 600 people to give him just $99 each to push the Kickstarter over the goal. He says $99 is too much and that Hartman is still too vague. Pie Guy Rules continues to attack Hartman for pleading uh, for money without showing fans why they should help him out with the Kickstarter. He wants to be told that uh, what Oaxis really is. He characterizes Butch's statement, uh, uh, quote, you trust me with your childhood, won't you trust me with your future, unquote, as manipulative and nearly brainwashing. He expresses his desire for this Oaxis Kickstarter to fail, fearing more Kickstarters to follow as Hartman continues to scam fans. Uh, Paga continues to accuse Hartman of being a con man or, quote, incredibly manipulative and in over his head, quote, and finally offers one way Hartman is free of ill intent, which is that he, which is that he might be, quote, comedically terrible at running a crowdfunding campaign, unquote. July 17, 2008, this is, uh, I guess, hours later, the same day, uh, Paga did a solo live stream expressing shock that Oaxis, the Oaxis Kickstarter reached and exceeded its goals. He cites Hartman's vagueness. Uh, is a reason he's frustrated. Uh, he went on to do a live stream with Soul. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with these people. This is not my world, so I'm just visiting. Um, but I didn't listen to that because it was like over an hour long and not enough time. July 19th, two days after the Oaxis Kickstarter success, Bye Guy calls Oaxis a Christian streaming service and a scam based on the fact that Hartman made a presentation to a bunch of Christians in a church in the hopes of gaining financial support for Oaxis, a family-friendly streaming service he would like to see rival Netflix and Hulu in five years. July 22nd, um, Pie Guy does this final, like, everything you need to know about this saga, and this is where the clip was pulled from, and, um, anyway, it's just, well, I was, I had it quoted in my notes here to, to read it out, but I already played it, so maybe I'll play it again, maybe not, um, but, he says it's a sinister, sinister agenda that Hartman has to convert people's kids to Christianity without letting them know, and without, more importantly, letting the backers of the Kickstarter know that this is the intention of the project. Now, I have... I, I watched a couple of these videos over again. I looked at a lot of the comments. Uh, something interesting, I thought, um, was the overall sense that people have about Butch Hartman is that he's arrogant He's full of himself. He let the success of Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom go to his head. Um, people stress the fact that he always says, I created your childhood. And he was you know, the showrunner and, and did concepts and pitches for these shows and then was involved with their production. But there were other people producing them, of course. Um, I've seen a couple of his videos where he's mentioned, oh, I worked with this person or that person. But he always stresses his uh, part in it. And uh, I don't know if that's arrogance or what, but um, I don't know. I uh, I don't think people should be arrogant. I think being arrogant is uh, unhelpful to you because um, in your arrogance, you'll be blinded to your own mistakes. And maybe that's part of Hartman's problem. Uh, I still don't think, uh, weighing all the information, that it is correct to 
say that Hartman is defrauding people with this Kickstarter, that it's a scam, and that it's a Christian streaming service that he is intending to use to convert people's children to Christianity without them knowing, like subliminally, you know, Pi Guy uses terms like brainwashing, and where I have a written, ah, see now I'm glad I wrote this down. Uh, so, Butch is essentially trying to use his platform to convert kids to Christianity but without disclosing that fact. I fully admit that this is only a guess at what he is saying. These are Pi Guy's words, not mine. Um, and, and that uh, only a guess at what he is trying to say here, and it could be entirely wrong. But the reason I came to that conclusion is because of all the shadiness and sketchiness that happened before that point. So, uh, that's interesting to me. I really wonder what's, uh, what's the issue here. Because based on uh, even everything in, in um, Hartman's presentation to the Christian group in the, in the video that's cited in this one, or in uh, Pi Guys, um, he says it's not a Christian streaming service. He says it'll have the gospel in it, and it'll have Christ in it in the same way that his other work did. And I know I'm repeating myself a little bit from what I've said before, but I really want to wonder, or have to wonder, like, what is the issue here? Um, so, uh, Pi Guy says in one of his early videos, maybe the first one about Oaxis, that he's going to be cynical about it, um, but uh, that he thinks it's, it sounds like it's going to be boring, and that it's going to fail, and he just thinks the Kickstarter, Kickstarter is a bad idea, he won't be giving his support to it. And... Um, then slowly, uh, over time, it seems like he changes to say, you know, you shouldn't be giving support to this. Um, it's wrong for Hartman to ask his fans, uh, who, you know, are the people he's reaching with his videos and on his channel, to give just, you know, it's just 600 of them to give just $99. It should have been a lot less money because his fans are young kids or young teens, teens, college students, and maybe young adults starting families. Um, who is Pie Guy to, like... <laughs> I'm seeing or like reading out of a lot of people's reactions to this, like, oh, this is going to fail, don't give money to it. Well, okay, yeah, if you believe it's going to fail, you shouldn't give money to it. I don't think anybody should force you to, he's not asking. There's no force, there's no coercion, there's, um, you know, m manipulation is thrown around a lot. Um, is it manipulative to say, you know, you trust me with your childhood, won't you trust me with your future? Um, I'm not sure because... Isn't that the same thing as saying, hey, I did this job for you before and it was good. You liked it. I did good enough for you to enjoy it. So why don't you give me the next job? Um, I mean, I don't understand how... <clears throat> well, I know a lot of people who say, you got to fake it till you make it, which is something I kind of believe in because people aren't just going to hand you things because you want them. You have to earn them. You have to give people confidence in you and in your abilities in or, or order for them to back you and support you in doing what you're trying to do, especially if the, you're wanting them to give you money for something like this, or if you are looking for a raise at your job or looking to get hired at a place. You do everything you can to make yourself appeal to uh, the individual who you're looking to gain something from. And there's nothing manipulative about that. Yeah, there shouldn't be, anyway, and I don't think there is in the case of Hartman. Um, you know, another another complaint about his Kickstarter is that a lot of his, um, <clears throat> a lot of his, excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my throat, but a lot of his uh, rewards are all about him, uh, getting a drawing from him, getting <laughs> to talk to him, getting an email from him, stuff like that, and uh, I just think that's kind of funny. It, the market will prove whether or not these things are worthwhile. Either people will choose to give to them or not. Um pedantic, romantic, and anti-tuber, anime YouTuber, uh, recently was talking about Studio Trigger's Kickstarter, and it's a little bit vague, um, and I think she made a really good point about it, and uh, about whether or not um, people should be giving to that particular Kickstarter, and she asserted that, look, if you want to get the animation made, funded, and if you want to, you know, give money to certain individuals, it's clear in their Kickstarter that that's not what's going to happen. And uh, I think it's right. She, she read um, <clears throat> what they had put in there, uh, you know, what Studio Trigger had put on their, I guess, English language Kickstarter. Um, and it was clear that uh, they were trying to use it for merchandise and just like extra money and maybe they'd give it to some of their animators. Like they, I think they, that's almost verbatim what they said. Um, I'm not looking at it right now, so I'm not going to quote it, but uh, it was pretty close to it. The thing is, I think it's pretty clear that Hartman's saying, 
believe in me, give me money, I'll make a family friendly network with stuff. The caliber of Danny Phantom, Fairly Odd Parents, and the other two that he always mentions that I don't really remember. Um, because I'm this guy, and um, this will be on a platform that's exclusively geared towards families. It'll be entertaining for everybody, but it'll keep away the negative stuff. And if that's what you believe in, then go ahead and kick, support, support the Kickstarter. That totally makes sense to me. I'm going to turn boring a little bit and read from the Kickstarter website like what Kickstarter is all about. So how does Kickstarter work? Thousands of creative projects are funding... <clears throat> On Kickstarter, at any given moment, each project is independently created and crafted by the person behind it. The filmmakers, musicians, artists, and designers you see on Kickstarter have complete control and responsibility over their projects. They spend weeks building their project pages, shooting their videos, and brainstorming what rewards to offer backers. When they're ready, creators launch their project and share it with their community. Every project creator sets their project funding goal and deadline. If people like the project, they can pledge money to make it happen. If the pro project succeeds in reaching its funding goal, all backers' credit cards <clears throat> are charged when time expires. If the project falls short, no one is charged. Funding on Kickstarter is all or nothing. So Hartman's funded. He's, he's got your money now. Or Oaxis does. Why do people back projects? <clears throat> A lot of backers are rallying around their friends' projects. Some are supporting people they've long admired. Many are just inspired by a new idea. Others are inspired by a project's rewards. A copy of what's being made, a limited edition, or a custom experience related to the project. Which, by the way, he should have offered OAX's memberships. <clears throat> uh, backing a project is more than just giving someone money. It's supporting their dream to create something that they want to see exist in the world. Um... <clears throat> Next question, excuse me, my throat's killing me, so I got a lozenge, so hopefully that'll help in a minute. Who is responsible for completing a project as promised? It's the project creator's responsibility to complete their project. Kickstarter is not involved in the development of the projects themselves. Kickstarter does not guarantee projects or investigate a creator's ability to complete their project. On Kickstarter, backers ultimately decide the validity and worthiness of a project by whether they decide to fund it. Anyway, I really wanted to say that I... You know, I kind of put the label of smear campaign on this because Pygon Rules and I think Eye of Soul and a couple other people are like really strongly against Hartman doing this. And uh, there were some people in Pie Guy's uh, uh, comment section like, yeah, look, at he's got lost like 6,000 supporters or, or uh, subscribers or was it 60,000? I don't remember because he got over 700,000. It was like 77 or maybe it was 777 and now it's like 770 or whatever. Which, I don't care. Again, I'm not invested in Hartman. Um, I just, I find it really interesting that he, it becomes crystal clear that he's a Christian and he's pitching this to his church and, or to a church, a group of Christians. Um, I would assume that Christians want family-friendly content and so why wouldn't he appeal to them directly? If he knows that his kid, that like millennials are his group, um, I think stats are that millennials are kind of like, Still, <clears throat> still tepid on religion, like they're not vehemently or virulently against it, um, but they definitely want like uh, <laughs> religion with like compromise and and uh, I don't know what you would say. Um, like they, you know, religion's cool if it's exclusionary. That's even better. Um, but it's funny. I was talking to somebody recently. She's a mom, and she met a Muslim mom at the park, and they were talking, and the lady was, like, really open with her about everything. Like, oh, yeah, my kids, you know, they're, uh, you know, memorizing the Quran, and, um, you know, they're doing this at their, you know, Islamic school. Uh, like, I don't know if it's a primary school that they go to or if it's, like, additional, but, like, that's cool. You know, whatever. Everybody should be cool with that, but, um, you know, I, uh, she told me that she was really nervous about letting this lady know, like, well... Um, you know, my husband's Jewish, and we were kind of, you know, Christian, and she was a little nervous about talking to this Muslim lady about that, and, um, I thought that was kind of funny, because this Muslim lady is proud, she's, you know, wearing a hijab or a niqab, I, I, I don't know, I didn't meet her, and the lady didn't describe specifically how she was covering her head, but she's, you know, living with her faith, um, in her clothing, and, like, for the most part, um, people don't think that's a negative thing. And um, I just find it really funny that, uh, you know, this lady is able to, or like I have this friend who's like a little tepid about, oh yeah, you know, my, uh, you know, 
just sharing her faith specifically with this lady. And um, it made me think about this and how, like, there's kind of a an anti-Christian slant in people. And again, I know Christians have been jerks and they've done bad things, especially like the Catholic Church with inquisitions <laughs> and crusades and whatnot. But like, it's been a long time. Bible thumpers are different. Um, like... <laughs> I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but Hartman basically said something like, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, look at his work. Does it seem Christian to you? Uh, or does it... Anyway, I'm starting to repeat myself from before. I don't want to do that. It just, I'm noticing this smear and this really strong bent against uh, the network being Christian, even though it's explicitly not supposed to be Christian, but just family values and not repulsive to, it. like... It sounds bad, but it's not repulsive to Christians. That's what kind of network it is. It may be repulsive to non-Christians because it doesn't carry certain types of content on it, but or people may turn up their nose at it because being Christian or family-friendly means that it fits with his specific beliefs and morals, uh, and it doesn't include certain things that they want included. And I can understand people being frustrated about that, not wanting to support the project because of that, but I don't know. There's just all these super negative pieces about, out about him and no access. And I think they're unfair and I think they're coming from a dishonest place. And I think they're coming from <clears throat> an exclusionary place where uh, people want to be, I don't know, bashing Christians. And uh, I think that stinks. I think if it was any other else, any other group and, you know, like if he was a Muslim or if he was a... Maybe if he was Jewish or he was uh, Hindu or something, he wanted to make a Hindu network. Um, uh, I think that probably wouldn't fly with certain people. And if you want to say, like, <clears throat> Tim Pool, a journalist on YouTube, whose work I really enjoy, calls out Abrahamic religions as, like, being biased against the LGBT community. And <clears throat> I think it's kind of undeniable. And uh, it's from their texts, specifically. Anyway, I think he's real truthful and real balanced, and if he would pay attention <laughs> to this little controversy, um, I think he would agree with what I'm saying, that it's not really a big deal, and it doesn't make sense all these people are demonizing him, and uh, I think it's the facts clearly show or present that he isn't trying to brainwash kids to become Christians with the O-Axis Network. And that's all I have to say. I'm Butch Hartman. I'm done. Uh, see ya. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can watch every episode as it becomes available. Thank you so much for your time. If you enjoy my work, please give it a like and share it. If you'd like to chat, hit me up in the comments or tweet me at rc underscore moon, spelled M-U-N, not M-O-O-N. Anyway, uh, be well and remember, don't curse that darkness. Shine your light. Until next time. <laughs>